In Australia, but it is winter here, and it has been cold today. We have not seen the sun. It's an overcast day, and uh, we don't have many of those in Australia. But uh, today is a cold one. So we've warmed up the cockles of our heart by singing a few songs, warm ourselves up as we praise the Lord. And uh, we can turn that off now because it's blowing on the back of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, it's good for the abundant. Sometimes it uh, gets in the way of uh, us making a recording. So we make a recording uh, each Sunday. Uh, today is Sunday, and if you worship the Lord on a Saturday, that's fine with us. We recognize that the the Sabbath is still the Sabbath, and that's the seventh day. And so, keep hold of the Sabbath day, and that's fine with us. But you don't make it a law unto yourself, and uh, make a denomination out of it, you know. Uh, and we worship the Lord of a Sunday because Jesus rose again on a Sunday. First day of the week, it says in the Bible that Jesus rose on the first day of the week. And so I think the first day of the week in the Bible is the same first day of the week that we have today. So nothing has changed there. So it's perfectly okay to celebrate Woo! Glory. Celebrate. Yes! Hallelujah. The resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ on a Sunday. Perfectly okay. And we recognize that the Sabbath is the Saturday. Nothing wrong with that. But like I say, you don't make a law unto it. Uh, you know, there's no uh, hard uh, Task for you to go to church on any day of the week. Because, after all, uh, according to the book of Acts, and of course that's the, the book that we follow, the Bible, excuse me, I'll just make a little adjustment there. And um, so we follow the Bible, the Bible is our rule book, if you like, and uh, but according to the Word of God, the church started in a house. And so um, we see in Acts 2.46 actually, they went from house to house, breaking of bread, and the Lord multiplied them, I think uh, 3,000 in one day. And I mean, hey, whoo, can you imagine that? House to house. And the Lord multiplied 3,000 in a day. And, uh, that's revival, man, that's revival. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've seen lots of revivals around the world over the last 25 years, and uh, but I don't think we've seen 3,000 come to the Lord in one day um, using houses, you know. Um, I've seen uh, something like 8,000 come to the Lord in a period of time that I've been going to the Philippines. Um, but that certainly wasn't from house to house. We used to, we hired a, a big stadium up at St. Carlos. My wife knows who that is. Uh, St. Carlos, a big, they had a big, big stadium, a sports stadium. And uh, it's quite big for the, for the city. You know, the, St. Carlos, a big city, and the, the stadium was, 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 was quite big, sports stadium. And somebody had a big vision, 
building that because uh, I don't think they ever uh, ever filled it with uh, with uh, with their sports and basketball and so forth. But anyway, uh, we went there. I was just a team of us of the, I don't know, a dozen or so, and we went there and we hired. Him. Uh, and the, the the man said, you know, uh, how many seats you want? I said, all of them. What, you know. And he said, he looked at me uh, over his glasses like this, and he looked at me and he says, all of them? I said, yeah, yeah, all of them. <laughs> so anyway, the stadium could fit about three and a half thousand or something, maybe four thousand. And... Um, the seats, he said, uh, well, you know, they're there, but you're going to have to put them out yourself. So anyway, we, we, we left them where they was, and uh, we thought, well, as people come, we'll put up the seats. And the first day, there was a dozen of us, and I think we rushed up maybe a three or four to, uh, out, of the, out of the street, you know. During the evangelism during the day, we managed to... Uh, we led more people to the Lord on the street than we did in the in the hall. But we got this hall hired and we wanted people to come. And uh, I think it was only half a dozen or something the first night. And so, uh, you know, the first day we, we didn't go out the street witnessing or anything. We, but the team that we was with, they did. You know, they, they was thinking, well, we've got to get people to go to the meeting. <laughs> Come to the wind. So anyway, uh, I think it was the second night. And we was only there for three nights. But so on the second night, uh, there was, uh, I remember it was early in the afternoon when we started the meeting about five or six o'clock or something, you know, because the, the, the sun is still up, it's not dark yet. And, uh, and this woman came with her daughter that uh, uh, never spoke, she'd never spoke. She was, she'd be about 13, 14 years old, this girl. Uh, she'd never spoken in her life. But they neglected to tell me that. You know, they talked in Filipino amongst each other, and I didn't understand what they were saying. But all I knew that this girl had some kind of infirmity that she needed prayer for. So they, they you yeah. <laughs> know, Benito Peklev, you know, he said to me, we could have prayed for this girl. We didn't say what we could have prayed for. So there's, there's, if you don't tell me what to pray for, I'll pray for everything around the world, you know, everything that I can think of. <laughs> so I say, Lord, touch this girl from the inside out and heal her body, heal her mind, and any infirmities has to go in the name of Jesus. I bind and break the power of you, Satan. Loose this girl. Let her go. Jesus is Lord here, you know. And after, I, and I kept going like this, you know, because I didn't know what to pray. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I mean, I'm still praying, you know. All of a sudden, this girl let out a massive scream. <laughs> and I, I stepped back and I says, what? I didn't hurt her, did I? All I did is lay hands on her. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> they started talking Filipino again amongst themselves and I'm sort of left out on the in the shade a little bit, you know, of what was going on. I thought, well, what's going on? And the mother was talking. The mother started to get louder and I thought, well, I didn't pray for the mother yet. <laughs> you know, but anyway, they're getting louder and louder. And I thought, what's going on, Benito? And he says, this girl, she, she's talking. And I says, obviously, here she is. She's screaming out. And I says, well, what's the big deal? This is because that's the first time she ever spoke. I said, what? She, she was deaf and dumb. Oh, and now she can hear both. She can hear and she can talk. And I said, what's she screaming for? She said, well, she never learned to talk. So she's, ah, ah, ah. I thought, oh, wow, but somebody teach her to talk, you know. So the next day, the very next day, I was blown away with one word that this girl said. Thank you. She learned overnight, thank you. Yeah. And she came the next day and said, thank you. And you know what? 
There were 3,000 people in that room. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Woo! Glory! She went out and told everybody in the, in the city, and we, ha we, we were full. The place was full. You could hear the pin drop in the place, you know, because it was quiet. Especially when I spoke. <laughs> They're thinking, what's he going to say next? Anyway, the next day, uh, of course, there was pastors from churches, and, you know, I think actually we had something like 12 churches represented around the city of St. Carlos. And uh, with here, I mean, we never, they couldn't rehearse anything overnight, but they did. They got together and said, if you're going to go first, then you're here. Mm -hmm. And everybody had about five minutes to in introduce themselves. And that took nearly an hour. And then I spoke for 10 minutes and that was the end of the meeting, you know. And uh, so, I mean, we'd only organized, prepared to be there three days. And uh, we were due to be somewhere else on the next day. So we had to leave. We had this bus and we loaded everything in the bus and away we went. We went down the coast then from San Carlos, which is the north. We all went down the coast just, you know, we spent about two days, I think, to get from San Carlos to buy a one. <laughs> it took us two days because we were praying for people all the way down. And uh, by the time we got to buy a one, which was about... Two days later, uh, a city which was normally um, about four and a half thousand in Bayawan uh, doubled itself virtually overnight. Every business, every motel, everything was chuck a block full. There was no room for me. I felt like Jesus, you know, I thought, well, he had no room, there's no room in the inn for him, and he had to go and sleep in a in a barn somewhere, you know. <laughs> I felt just like that. We had to go and sleep in this resort out of town, you know, because the town was full. And I thought, what's going on with this town? And Bernardo and some of his men looked at me and says, what do you mean? I said, well, what's the big deal with this town? There must be something big happening here. And I was embarrassed with me. And I said, uh, there's something going on that I should know about, you know? Because they was looking at me like as if I'm crazy. And they says, they've come because we're here. I said, you've got to be joking. And he says, no, no, these people are here for us. Like, what? He says, well, look, we've been uh, on the radio every day for three weeks before you got here. And they had this big banner across the street, you know, Brian Richards, evangelist from Australia. I thought, oh, take that down. That's not me. I'm not a big-time evangelist, you know. And anyway, they said, take it out, boys. And then he says, hold on. I says, no one knows me here. I said, that's right. I thought, well, so it doesn't mean anything to them. You know, an evangelist, Brian Richards from Australia, doesn't mean anything to them. They don't know. That's right. I said, and when I speak, they're not going to understand anything I say anyway, because I need an interpreter. I said, yeah, that's right. I says, okay. Leave it up there. <laughs> that was the, the only recognition I ever had, you know. So, uh, left it up there. And uh, and so, we had some really, really good times in there. Uh, uh, two days of evangelism there. On the third day, when we were supposed to preach, we didn't. We went down to the beach and baptised 220 people. 220 people I baptised in the water and my loins was in the water all this time from about 10 o'clock in the morning to something in the afternoon and I was standing in the water baptising people and they had to help me out of the water because I was paralysed, almost paralysed. I was so long in the water baptising people, 220 people people baptised in one day. We had reports that happened every week for three months. 
and there was something like 8,000 people, names and addresses on Benito's book. Isn't that amazing? So that's because of one girl, deaf and dumb, God used, and she opened up a to hear that she could talk. And God used that one miracle to bring so many people to to a meeting. So many people came to the Lord because of one miracle. So God is still in the miracle healing business as today as he was when the Apostle Paul was alive and when Jesus was alive and and all the disciples, you know. It says in my Bible that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, in Hebrews. And nothing has changed. You know, people say all the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, died with the apostles. Well, I've got news for you, buddy. There is one that rose again from the dead and his name is Jesus, hallelujah, and he's still with us. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever and he's with you now. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible tells us these things. So why do we say that the gifts of the Holy Spirit died with the apostles? There was the, in Romans 1, 11, uh, the Paul says, I desire to be with you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you would be established. So there's many scriptures that talk about gifts being uh, imparted to others. You know, it, 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 Jesus himself in John 17 says, I pray that you would believe on these that would follow me. So do you believe on those that came after Jesus? Sure you do. We read the Bible and believe the Bible and it was written by the apostles and prophets of old and the New Testament, of course, because most of the New Testament written by Paul and uh, Luke and, and John, and uh, so we we uh, we believe because of their testimony. Others that come after us will believe because of your testimony. Okay, and so it goes on, and the impartation must continue also. Otherwise, it will die. But it won't die with the apostles of old. It'll die with you. You now carry the message to the next generation. I wrote a book and I pray with all my heart that people would read this and receive an impartation of the anointing that is on it. It's called uh, Every Day with Prophecy. I need to, <laughs> if I'm going to read, I need to change as you get older, you need to make adjustments because uh, the eyes will adjust itself. You have to make the adjustments with it. <laughs> okay. We live in prophecy every day. Iron sharpens iron. That's his, the title of the book. You have a look at that. And the, the cover is, uh, if you can't see it, the cover is uh, a forger. Uh, what do you call it? When you forge steel, it's a what is it? Tongues, tongues and a hammer. Boom! And you, it's he's taking the hot steel and changing shapes. And uh, it says in Proverbs uh, twenty-seven seventeen, iron sharpens iron, and so is the man's uh, man sharpens his countenance with his friends. God will put you with a friend that maybe you rub with for a while until you. You know, you both adjust to each other. And uh, that's the shaping of the Lord. The Lord uses people to shape your character and your nature, you know. Uh, and um, 
And we live in prophecy every day, meaning you've got to watch what you say because sometimes you say a thing that you don't particularly want and it'll come to pass anyway. Why? Because you have the anointing within you. You have the prophet within you. You have Jesus within you. And you become like Jesus. The more you become like Jesus, the more you'll speak like the prophet and the more your words will come to pass just that quick. Sometimes you think, oh, I didn't really mean that. But you've got it anyway because you said it. Okay. Jesus says you can have what you say. And uh, you can speak to the mountain and be removed. Mark 11, 23 says, speak to the mountain. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. And you speak to the mountain, it will be removed. The same way you receive salvation is the way you receive everything in life. And that is you believe in your heart and you confess with the mouth. And Jesus rose again from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and by your confession is made unto salvation. Isn't that the way you got saved? If you are not saved, if you're not born again and you're not spirit-filled, then you wouldn't be enjoying this message right now. But you can change that right now. You can ask Jesus to come into your life and the same spirit that wrote this book becomes into you and you start to read and understand the Bible like you've never understood before because now you have the right spirit that is interpreting the book the way it should be. You have a relationship with God that way. You know, you fellowship with God through the word and now your relationship is correct because you can hear from God. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Hallelujah. I could never work that out. When I first came to the Lord, I thought, my sheep hear my voice. Well, I believe, you know, God, God loves me enough to get me saved, to receive me into the kingdom. I believe that. But I certainly didn't hear his voice. But I found out later on that as I meditated in the word of God and spoke it out of my mouth, by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed, then I realized that I received him. Uh, when I spoke out of my mouth that God supplies all of my needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus, then I found out my needs are being met. And that prosperity really does belong to us. It's a part of the covenant of God. I realized that the curse that had been dug in me all my life doesn't need to be there anymore. I have to be free from that. Praise God. This is a wonderful, wonderful gift of salvation. It is a gift. Will you receive it now? It is a gift. God is here. The Lord is saying, receive my salvation. Receive me and you will enter into my rest. Enter into the kingdom of God. I've said all that just in preparation for what my son is about to say. Because he's going to talk about entering into a rest. He's going to talk about entering into a relationship with the God, our, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And just as surely as I am Joshua's father, Joshua is going to reflect the things that he's been learning from his father and learning from our father God. So the power of the Lord Jesus Christ comes through his word as we meditate on it and as we speak it out. What stops this what stops this from working is one scripture that I've been that, that, give me that one scripture that I've been told to share on this morning by the Spirit of God is one Corinthians six nine. One Corinthians six nine says
Now you're not that unrighteousness. The unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor emanate or abuses themselves of it, are, are, are abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkenness, nor revelers and extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. It goes on to talk about all the different sins and that is what stops us from entering the kingdom of God. Verse 11. And such were some of you. Be ye washed, but be ye sanctified, be ye justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. See that? We'll be sanctified and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. He cleanses us up and makes us holy. Say that word, holy. holy. We are holy. The Lord makes us holy. Hallelujah. And so, I'm reading from Corinthians, but my son is reading from Hebrews, and we're going to line up these two together. And uh, so, we're going to go from, I'll be reading Corinthians each week, while Joshua will be reading Hebrews. Hebrews 4. And we don't need the big box anymore, we give him this little platform here. There we go. There we go. Is that all right? Yeah. That's good. Bless him, Lord, with quick understanding of Jesus' name. Hello, my name's Joshua. I'm the son of Reverend Brian. I was born on July 2006, 28. Um, last week, we read Hebrews chapter 3, 14 to 19. Now <laughs> we're going to read Hebrews <coughs> chapter 4, 1 to 7. Let us therefore, so we want to know what it means by therefore. So we're going to go back a scripture into verse 19 and see what it means by um, therefore. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So let us therefore, because of unbelief, fear lest a promise being left of us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest, the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so a long time, as it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Now, uh, I want to say a little thing about it, um, what I understand about it. What I understand about it is like um, these people were um, in rebellion for 40 years. And um, because of that, God did not let them into um, his rest because of rebellion for 40 years. Because unbelief. Okay, um, Dad may come back on now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very good, very good, very good, very good. So, you know, it's good to be able to read, and my son is becoming a, a good reader. And I appreciate God uh, for teaching, teaching Joshua. And uh, now, being 
it's become not only a good reader, but he's starting to understand what he's reading. And therefore, the, the fellowship and the relationship with God is coming, you know? And uh, so, like I was explaining a couple of weeks ago, you know, the relationship, we're related, and that relationship can never be changed. However, what can improve is the fellowship that we have with God. The relationship we don't break with the Lord, but we do break fellowship because sometimes we we don't get into the Word and, and meditate the Word and, and really pray and talk to talk to the Lord about about the things that are going on in their life. And sometimes we need wisdom uh, in our decision making. And in James chapter one it says, any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. You know, so God is is willing to give you whatever you ask for if you ask in faith. You know? James chapter one says, let, let a man uh, ask in faith. You know? If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and God will give liberally. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave in a sea, is tossed. You know, and you know if you're double-minded about this, you receive nothing. Let a double-minded man receive nothing of God. So you're asking faith, not wavering, and uh, God is well pleased with your faith. Uh, you can't please God without faith. And well, there's Joshua comes each week to read a little bit of the Bible and reads it in faith, believing that he can understand. But now he's starting to understand. He's starting to blossom and uh, he's, he's doing a good job. So what are you talking about? Uh, I mean, enter into a rest. Okay. In, in 1 Corinthians 10, <clears throat> the name. We line up Corinthians with Hebrews, and in 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 10, you see the whole story. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you be ignorant how that all our fathers were under a cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. And they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they was overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were an example, examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they had lusted, neither be idolaters as some were of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up early to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day 3,000. 3,000 died in one day because of fornication. So we don't want to get involved with that, do we? Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them were tempted and were destroyed by serpents. <clears throat> And neither let us, neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed by the destroyer. That murmuring and gossiping is the same thing. Now, all these things happen unto them for an example for us. All them happen as an example, and they was written for our admonition, upon the ends of the world for whom the ends of the world are to come. So the end of the world is coming and we are this is written for our guidance. Say wherefore. wherefore. Now what's the wherefore therefore? If the wherefore you come up against the wherefore you say what is it there for? You go back a verse and find out what it's there for. And like I said, that this was written for our admission upon the ends of the world. I come. Wherefore, 
Let him that thinketh that he stand take heed lest he fall. That there has no temptation taken but such as common to men. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be able suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. And with the temptation, he'll provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Speak as a wise man, judge and say. Cup of blessing, which will bless. It goes on. But... The first 10 verses there talks about the sins that prevented them, this is the children of Israel, prevented the children of Israel from getting into the promised land. Just as Joshua said, what is understanding of the scriptures is that these are the things that stop from, from entering into a rest through unbelief. Yes, unbelief is the essence or the basis of all sin all sin because if you doubt and fear or unbelief of what god has says you will automatically commit sin see i mean why do christians commit sin is because they have doubt or fear unbelief yeah? and so they commit sin uh, I'll leave it that. I'll pause with that and I'll come back to it next week and uh, my wife's going to take over now. God bless you all. I'll come back to pray for you. Before I'm going to read this uh Bible, I would like to, oh, I'm going to read the Bible in, uh, in uh, Psalms chapter 47, verse 1 to 9, and Psalms 48, verse 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph, for the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God is gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises, sing praises unto our king. Sing praises, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heaven. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. We would like to sing a song, How Great is Our God.
Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What scripture was that? Psalms 47, 1, yeah. 9, and then Psalms 48, 1. Uh, because, uh, remind me, it did remind me of uh, when we were just in Bible school, we was at a, a psalm. Uh, what, can you just send me the words again? Uh, the, words. the splendor of a king, clothed in majesty. No, no, no. What is that? Uh, clap your hands. Uh, uh, it's in uh, Psalms 47, 1, 9. Read it. Uh, Psalm 47, 1, 9. Psalm 47, 9. It reminds me of a song. Let me have a look at this. 47, 1. 47, 1. There's the clappy hands. Clappy hands. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let's see now if I can remember. Let's see if I can remember this. Clap <laughs> your hands, all ye people, share a heart with the voice of God. Clap your hands, all ye people, share a heart with the voice of praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, share a heart with the voice of God. Praise Him, praise Him. Chant on the God with the voice of faith. Clap your hands, all ye people. Chant on the God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people. Chant on the God with the voice of faith. Hosanna, Hosanna. Chant on the God with the voice of triumph. Praise Him, praise Him. Chant on the God with the voice of praise. Woo! One more time. Hands, holy people, chant on the God with the voice of Christ. Clap your hands, holy people, chant on the God with the voice of Christ. Hosanna, Hosanna, chant on the God with the voice of Christ. Praise Him, praise Him, chant on the God with the voice of Christ. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> I just uh, have been saying that for, oh uh, gosh, maybe 40 years. <laughs> But uh, that uh, was one of the one of the songs we used to sing during our Bible school days, and the uh, Lord just remember, reminded me of that. See, so the Psalms and the Proverbs are there to give us the encouragement that we need to see us through our day. But if we never read them, we never meditate them. We will not have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So praise Him. Rejoice and be glad. In Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for all those people that are, have needs. I, I ask them to reach out as I reach out to them, reach out to me. And I pray, Lord, that you meet their needs, regardless with His healing deliverance, salvation, whatever is the need. You pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I bring myself to you. I bring myself to you. I present my body as a living sacrifice. I believe I receive your spirit into my life. Forgive me of all sin. Forgive me of all my sins. And I believe. I believe that Jesus rose again that from the dead. Me and Jesus, rose. Jesus rose again from the dead. He rose again from the dead. I receive him as my Lord. I receive him as my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Heal my body. Heal my body, Lord. And heal my mind. Heal my mind. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. And make me whole. Make me whole. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you send that prayer for the first time, maybe you could send me an email. Or if you send that prayer and you just want to be on our mailing list, well, then be on our mailing list. And uh, the website for that is uh, uh, Rev Brian 
richards.com and uh, you'll see the place there for you to put your details, your email address. You do that today and I will know that uh, you are joined at a list for the first time and I will send you some uh, literature and I'll send you some encouraging words. I'll send you my book, Bell Parasm, Lord of the Breakthrough. And this is only a small book, so it's easy to go through as an electronic download of PDF. And so if you like and subscribe, it's always good for the selling of my books, which is uh, uh, trafficbuilder2.com or trafficbuilder3.com. One is for hard copy and one is for electronic download, which, uh, which are produced by Lulu. These are Lulu Publishers and Amazon Publishers do a marvelous job for me. And I pray that there'll be people that will uh, purchase the, the funds that are raised there are used for evangelism. And we've been doing great work in the Philippines and we hope that you participate with, uh, with the work that we do and that you would purchase uh, one of our books so we can continue that work. Thank you. God bless you now. Uh, please be on our mailing list. Bye now. We go with the song. Go off with the song.
Like, comment, and subscribe! That's probably not going to be in the video. Don't forget that.